This is the Wolverine from Work Tough Gear. If you're interested in hearing more about this classic camp knife, keep watching. Before we begin, I want to thank Work Tough Gears for sending me the Wolverine so that I could share it with you. So this is the second knife from Work Tough Gear that I will have reviewed, the other being the Kodiak, which is the larger brother to the Wolverine. Both of these knives were designed by Alex, the owner of Borealis Knives in Ontario, Canada, and I gravitated towards Alex's designs because they speak to me and say this is a functional design for the Canadian outdoors and Alex being an avid outdoorsman himself certainly knows what he's talking about for sure. The other thing I want to mention before we look closer at the knife is Work Tough Gear themselves. So who are they and why should you take a look at them? Well Work Tough Gear is based out of Taiwan. They've been making knives for over 20 years. They are a family owned business and their focus is to make quality functional knives at an affordable price. So they have done a very good job of that. The other thing I like like to say about Work Tough Gear is that their ethic regarding the designs. They don't design these knives themselves. They actually reach out or are contacted in some cases by other knife designers and they partner in the production of these knives. So Alex did design these two knives and a third one called the Lynx. I don't have that yet but hopefully I'll be able to review that at some point in the future. It's a smaller version of these knives. And they, uh, Alex had has Work Tough Gear producing the knives for them and that's the way it works with Work Tough Gear. They have designers from all over the world submitting designs and, uh, and Work Tough Gear produces them to a very high standard, yet keeping the affordability. Now, when I look through their works, their website, there is a great number of designs that are huge, big knives, big chopper knives, some of them very uh, culturally specific. They have cultural history to the designs of them. Others are very militaristic uh, looking knives. All good looking uh, knives, not all of them spoke to me, but certainly these ones did because of their heritage. But at the same time, uh, I'm sure that you'll find a design that meets your needs or your fancy because some of them are pretty, how should I say, fantasy based knives in, in some respects. I'm sure they're functional, but they, they're, not, they're not ones that speak to me. Maybe that's the best way to say it. All right, I'm going to give you a few specifications for this knife, and then we'll move on to doing some demonstrations with it. So to start with, it does come in a nice, and I mean nice, Kydex sheath. Kydex sheath. Very simple in design. It's, uh, how should I say, nothing special, but very well put together. It holds the knife in perfectly with a nicely formed thumb ramp on it, and lots of good retention. The web belt itself for holding it on your belt is dome snap and Velcro, so you can take it on and off of your belt without undoing your belt or your pants. The attachment to the sheath itself is movable, so you can move it up, down, sideways. If you want to turn it into scope carry, you can, can left to right, works very well that way. Just a basic functional knife or a sheath. Now, it also came with a few other accessories, and these are more nice to have things, of course, and they come in a little bag like this, and inside of this bag, I showed these with the Kodiak as well. I'll show them again. A beverage cozy, beverage cozy that's uh, with Work Tough Gear's logo on it. A Work Tough Gear morale patch with Velcro on the back. A stretch or a piece of paracord to use as a lanyard. I chose not to put it on this knife and I'll explain why in a moment. Two more items. There is an Allen key and two screws inside this little bag and they are for the scales. If for whatever reason you lose one of the screws holding the scales to the side of the handle, then you have spares to put them on. And the only way I can think of that happening is uh, if you do a lot of chopping with your knife, maybe the vibrations would uh, loosen them over time. But of course you can remove the scales if you want to for maintenance. And I suppose there's a risk of losing them if that were to happen. Well, you have spares, which is a really nice touch. And the last thing is a ferrocerium rod, kind of an emergency one you might put in a uh, kit just to make sure you have one with you in addition to all the other ones I have in my kit. Two-piece one, it has a small ferrocerium rod and a striker built in together. A nice little touch, likely it will never get used but it will go in the bottom of my bag just in case. So let me put those items aside and then we'll talk more about the knife itself. So I am going to refer to my notes for some of the specifications for this knife. But I think a lot of it is pretty self-evident. All right, so obviously this is a full tang construction. You can see the tang extending through the knife. At the end, it has a hidden 
uh, lanyard loop. I can see the trees are starting to cause me shadows here. A hidden lanyard loop so it doesn't protrude through the handle. And you'll, I'll talk again about the little piece of paracord I have on it. It is of a drop point design, but it is a broad, high saber grind. It's almost full flat grind. You can see there's very little flat near the top. So it's almost a full flat grind, but not quite. It is finished with a convex edge at the very edge of it. And I mentioned this with the Kodiak, it's polished. So it's gotta be the last thing done to the knife before it's wrapped up for shipping is that they actually polish the convex edge on this. And it is sharp. There's no question about it. It is very, very sharp. And because of that convex edge, it holds its edge a long time. It, uh, it, you know, the convex has just that little bit more metal behind it and allows it to be used for chopping or splitting or whatever. And uh, I have, well, I have, how should I say it, run it down a ceramic rod and across the strop, but I have not had to remove any burrs or chips or rolls or anything on this uh, at any time for it. The steel is SK85 Japanese steel, known for its toughness. It is ideal for this type of knife, knife that's going to be put under heavy use. It has a 3D sculptured G10 handles, in this case they are black, they have just enough traction on them to be uh, provide good grip, but not so much that it's hard on your hands. Little scallops right up here at the top, so you can use this in reverse grip. It's almost too small a grip for that, but it does work. Now, of course, I have a double XL hand, so that makes it a little hard for me to hold on to most handles on knives, but it does work. Some of the things I really like about this is how far forward the grips come in relation to the plunge line right here so that I can get right up on top of the cutting edge and over the cutting edge with the web of my hand so that I can get maximum control right down the edge of the knife on a piece of wood. Great, great feature. The spine itself is sharpened and will throw wicked sparks off of every ferrocium rod it's, yeah, I have. Uh, I just want to look at the blade thickness. So it is a 0.196, I'm going to say 3 sixteenths of an inch, so 0.196 of an inch thick. The cutting edge or the blade length is six and a half inches and uh, the overall length is 11.6 inches. The weight of this knife comes in at under a pound at seven or 14.5 ounces. So a good size knife. Now, most people might refer to this as a survival knife, and they would be right. You could use this and have this as a survival knife. I see I'm starting to get into shadow here. I may have to move in a moment. And it uh, would be a survival knife. Uh, to me, what this is, is a camp knife. It is ideal for any number of chores around the camp. I would not hesitate to use this for uh, meal prep in terms of uh, cutting up meat or slicing vegetables because of that high grind. It is a great slicer. At the same time, I would use this and have been using it for a lot of wood prep. Um, I hesitate to call this a chopper. You can chop with this, and that's part of the reason why I have a little, little tiny loop on the back of this. I might as well show you that now. We're I can put my baby finger through like that and then choke back towards the pommel and then I can get some chop with this. I don't do that unless it's just limbing, like taking little snap cuts and doing a little bit of limbing or cutting some brush away. But for chopping big pieces of wood, no, there's, well, the Kodiak is, that's what it's designed for. But uh, you could do it, but it would take a lot of effort to cut anything of any size. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a general all round cap knife. Great for food prep, great, great for wood prep for fires. Um, it's just about everything you want in a belt knife without being overly big and overly heavy. All right, I think it's time we do a few demonstrations with this knife and then I can get out of these shadows and give you a better look at it. All right, I have a, I guess, 16 inch piece of maple. It is three inches, two and a half, three inches in diameter. And that's the larger in there. Um, I'm going to baton this down with the knife. This will be a bit of work without question. And, uh, but I think it's well within the wheelhouse of what this knife can do. Uh, I don't have a block, like a chopping block to work with or an anvil, so I'm on a granite rock. So what I use is just a small piece of wood behind it so that if the knife does travel down through, it lands on the uh, piece of wood rather than on the rock itself. This will, I'll have to stand, I think, because this is a little taller than I realized. And uh, it'll take a bit of work, but let's just see how well it goes. All right, nowhere near the work that I expected from this knife, and that is a lot because of the 3 16 inch 
thickness. Yeah, that's nice looking wood. Bit of a curve to it, but I'm going to split it down at least one more time here so that I can get a piece of wood that I can do some feather sticking with. Oh yeah, there's some nice wood underneath that. That's great. Okay. So now there's a couple of things you're going to do with a piece of wood that, and a knife like this. I guess one of the things you're going to be looking for, although this may, maybe this is, might be a better choice of wood for it, is how about making uh, pen tags or tent pegs, maybe for your tarp or something. So this also is a piece of maple that I cut a little while ago. I'm just going to put a point on this and uh, that should be well within the capabilities of this knife. If my block doesn't stop moving. There we go. So I've got a reasonable edge or point on the knife. Of course the other end has to be a place for it to catch the guy line. Buried that in pretty good. There we go. And now I'm going to push cut it into a V or an L7 or a 7 notch or whatever you want to call it. All right, I think that works pretty good. So there we go. Pretty quick tent peg, I would say. And so it, that's a task that you would expect of any camp knife. I think that worked out very good for it. So if you can do those basics, like pointing a point on a knife and making an L7 or a notch like that, then just about anything else you want to build, be it traps or cranes for your pot over a fire or anything else, then you can do it with this one. Now, let's see about feather stick. And I may have to move the camera a little bit in order to capture this. Let's just have a look and see. All right, let's, uh, let's see what we can do with this piece of wood. Ooh, fine curls. Ooh, very fine curls. What I have found working with this knife, now I have knives that will produce much easier or much easier to use to produce feather sticks with because they uh, are scanty ground, very sharp edges, thinner blades, and that also helps a lot. But this only being 3 16 of an inch is not so thick that it can't be used. I see little pin knots going that are catching me up as well, but uh, it's working. Scan, uh, convex edges can be a little bit of a challenge in doing this, but it's all a matter of getting used to your knife and a little bit of practice. So I'm not making the biggest and best of feather sticks, but I wanted to show that with a little bit of practice, you can get some nice, fine feathers and even tinier curls, the ones that will catch a spark from a ferrocerium rod. All right, I think that's enough to demonstrate that happening. Now, let's talk about a ferrous cerium rod. We're going to try and see if we can't get this lit with the knife. All right, when it comes to using a large knife for the lighting a fire with a ferrous cerium rod, you can do it the traditional way of inverting the blade edge up, using the back of the knife and running it down the ferrous cerium rod. It'll certainly throw sparks without question. The problem with that, of course, is that you have a large piece of metal moving through space that happens to be a sharp edge on it. So there is a risk associated with that. And quite often you smash into your tinder bundle, sending it flying and you fail to get your fire lit. The other way and a better way to use a large knife is to prop it across the work that you have like this and then hold it in place and then pull the knife or pull the ferrocerium rod backwards across the back edge of the knife. Let's see if I can do this. It's a matter of getting it into the right place. Lots of sparks. There we go. Keep going. I may lose it. Did I lose it? No, I got it. There we go. Okay, so that's the better way to use a larger knife for lighting a feather stick. All right, a few thoughts on the Wolverine from Work Tough Gear. So, camp knife, that's its best classification. It is a bit of a do-all knife for just about everything you're going to do in camp. The one thing I'd hesitate to say about it, it's not a chopper. That's the Kodiak. The Kodiak is a chopper. This will do everything else other than chopping. You can chop with it, as I mentioned, but I, that's not what its purpose is. By the way, 
Uh, I said I put the small piece of paracord on here rather than the large piece because I would not be using this as a chopper, therefore I don't need the longer lanyard on it. But I did choose a piece of orange because of the black scales. If I lay this down instead of putting it back in my sheath, that helps me find it. Or if I drop it in the snow, it just helps me find it. That's the reason it's there. Not so big that it will catch on anything moving through the woods, but big enough that I can see it and still use the tiny loop for my baby finger if I want to use it for snap chops, which is, I'd say, the best way to use it for chopping is just snap chops. Good all-round camp knife with that high saber grind, nearly a full flat. It will work for food prep. It'll work for all the other chores, kitchen chores you would use with it. It works really well for wood processing, as you saw. It'll do everything you want. Can you use it as a game knife? Yes, you can. It still has enough of a drop that you can turn it upside down. You should be able to skin with this. It's a bit big for that, but I think it certainly could be used for that. Okay, so it's a really good knife. Are there any downsides to it? Okay, the cons that I'm going to mention are relative and specific to me. While I really, really like the shape of the handle with its contours in all directions, Coke bottle shape, scallop grooves for the thumb. Uh, the thing is, it's a bit thin right through here in both directions. Now, maybe you won't find it that way, but with my double XL hands, I can get on it but if I'm doing any, certain, any amount of feather sticking with this knife, then I find that I'm working extra hard to hold on to the knife. Can anything be done about that? Well, that's the nice thing about this. With removable scales, and it is my intention to do so, I'm going to put it in a set of liners, very thin liners that will widen the knife out just a little bit. You don't want it too wide because then, of course, it changes the dynamics of the handle so that it seems to be rounder than it is right now, but wider enough that it will fill up this area just a little bit more than it is right now, and I should be able to get better purchase on it. That's the nice thing about this design. Uh, yeah, actually, if you wanted to, you could probably make entirely new handles for this out of any material from wood to whatever you have. But I think all I need to do is just put some liners in and thicken it up. This is a really nice knife. I can see myself using this a lot. I really like how I can get so far forward on that. I mentioned that already. I like that high grind and the convex edge. It keeps its edge very well. I have I think I mentioned this, run it down a ceramic rod and across a strop, but I have not had to put it to stones at all. And I would not be hesitate to do that. I know people are hesitant to use uh, stones on a convex edge, but that's just a matter of technique and anyone can learn that, of course. Yeah, nice knife. So, like I mentioned, there is one more knife in this series from Alex at Borealis Knives. And uh, I don't have it, but hopefully I'll have it in the future that I'll be able to bring to you. I'll put all the information regarding the Wolverine in the video description below, as well as links to Alex's Facebook page so that you can see what else he has going on and all the specifications as well. But if you have any questions regarding this knife, if you have any experience with it that you want to share, please do put it all in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.